I would like to thank EVBase for sending me this item today. I previously installed a rear seat display a few months ago, and this is an updated version, and I will go over the differences. Let's get started with the unboxing. Flipping open the lid, we have a soft foam protective pad on top. Moving that out of the way, we see the display itself wrapped in a plastic bag. After removing the plastic wrapping, we see the unit itself. There is a screen protector installed, and I will not remove it until it's put into the car. And, by the way, the smudge that you see is just on the plastic protector and not on the screen itself. Let's get a closer look. This is a direct replacement for the rear console vent trim piece. As you can see from the side, it conforms to the shape of the rear console area. Underneath is a label showing the specs for this backseat multifunction control system. The wide opening with foam weather sealing around it, connects to the car's rear HVAC venting duct. On top is a single 8-pin connector that will attach to the cable coming up next. Overall, the black plastic has a matte finish similar to the trim of the original vent cover. There is a silver bezel that surrounds the screen. On the bottom, are two USB-C ports, and in between them is a long slot for the air vent, which is fed from the inside duct shown right here. Under the screen, we have some things needed for this kit. This cable is a 26-pin data cable for 2019 and newer Model 3 and Y vehicles. Next, we have a 2017 to 2018 cable adapter that I will need for my 2018 Model 3. This is known as a 20-pin data cable, and I'll talk more about it in a little bit. Inside this Ziploc bag is a plastic pry bar for installation, and it will not mar the surface trim. Also, we have a USB terminator plug for the factory USB cable that will not be used with this rear screen housing. And that's it for the included parts. Here are the two cables, the 20 pin on the left and the 26 pin on the right. As I mentioned, the 20 pin is for the older 2017 to 2018 cars, and the 26 pin is for 2019 and newer cars. I'll put the 26 pin cable harness away since I will not be needing it. I'll be taking off the twist tie that holds the cable for shipping. It will be more than enough length for installation. I'll show you how the cables work before I put it in the car. At one end, the 8-pin male connector, I will attach it to the female connector from the display. The other end of the cable has the 20-pin connector and will attach to the cable in the car. So this adapter will fit in line, basically splicing it into the CAN bus system. Also on the cable harness is a 2-pin Y adapter plug that's for the right passenger seat adjustment controls. For installation, you can remove this seat adjustment cable for ease of fitting the wiring, and then reconnect it afterwards. And now for the installation. First, I will install the front passenger seat adjustment adapter. Pull back the seat cushion to get a view of this area. Looking inside, you will see the wiring attached to a control box. Just pull the connector to the left and detach it from the box. It's a little tight, so you may need to take some time to do this correctly. Attach this male connector to the female end of the adapter. Then, start feeding the cable inside the opening.
Go to the rear seat area and look under the front seat. You will see the wiring hanging down. Pull on the wiring until all of it is inside the seat area. With just the Y adapter remaining, attach the male connector to the control box that's inside the seat. This can be a little tricky and you may have to feel around a bit and connect it by touch. I found that using the plastic pry bar can do the final connection. Once fully snapped into place, you can close up this area. Then route the wiring under the seat through the support brackets over to the left side. Make sure it's clear of the sliding seat bracket. I will connect it to the main harness a little later. I recommend moving the front seats to the most forward position to make it easier to work on the rear console area. I'll do the same for the passenger side. Remove any floor mats you may have in the back seat area. Now for the upper rear console. Just get a good grip on the vent assembly, then pull straight up and it will unsnap from the clips. Be careful since there is a cable attached to the housing. The cable is on the bottom of the unit. Just pull up on the retention clip and the cable can then be released to disconnect. You can then place this piece aside. You will not need it anymore, but I would still keep it just in case. Taking the USB wire from the car, attach the USB termination plug to the end of it. Once you do that, you can fold it back into the area so that it is out of the way. The lower part of the rear console area is what we have here. I want to remove the trim piece to get access to the wiring behind it. I found the easiest way is taking the plastic pry bar and going along the side edge of the plastic piece. Once you get a good grip, pull on it and it will unsnap the five connectors on the panel. You can then place it aside. At this point, I'm going to connect the cable that went from the front passenger seat over to the left hand side here and attach it to the main harness. These two pin connectors will only attach one way. Now for a little fishing. Take the end of the adapter cable that we installed earlier. Put it into the lower opening and then keep pushing it up. Eventually, you will see the end of the cable in the gap between the HVAC vent and the edge of the console. Take the eight pin host interface connectors, which are the smaller ones, one from the adapter and also one from the display and attach them together. Make sure to line up the release tab on the left connector with the corresponding lock on the right connector. Then they will snap in. With all of the excess cable, tuck them into the gap between the vent duct and the edge of the console. There should be plenty of room in there. Make sure none of the cables are blocking the vent opening. Then place the cover over the opening and center it. Press down to snap in the clips. Here is a close-up look of the newly installed vent assembly and display. It 
blends in well with the existing plastic and looks very OEM-like. Press the tab on the left connector and it will detach from the right one when you pull on it. Note that the right connector is fixed in place and cannot move. Now get the adapter cable out and ready. Insert the car's data cable male connector, which is shown on the left, into the female end of the adapter cable shown on the right. These plugs only fit one way, so if they don't connect, just flip one of them over and try again. Now take the adapter cable and insert the male end, shown on the left, into the female end that is fixed to the frame, which is on the right. Make sure both of the connections are tight. Back at the base of the rear console, I need to stuff as much of the cable into the lower opening as possible. Once I get in as much as I can, I will place the trim piece back on. Then press in to snap the five clips into position. With the installation done, I can pull off the protective plastic from the display. And that's it for the installation. Pretty straightforward and not that difficult. The only tricky part was the tight fit of the right passenger seat wiring. And here is the view of the finished product, the EVBay 7.2 inch rear seat display and control center. In fact, it's very similar to the previous 7 inch rear screen that I had installed. Here you can see the default mode of the screen, which is called lock mode. You can flip up the screen to go into the controls. In the software, you can turn off the lock screen if you wish and just have the controls on all the time. Having two high-powered USB-C ports is an improvement over my original 2018 rear USB-A ports. Now I'm going to do a comparison between the previous 7-inch and the new 7.2-inch displays. As you can see, the older one is on the left. You can see that it has larger vents compared to the one on the right. The biggest difference is the larger screen size and the silver bezel that goes around the screen. The rear of both units is fairly similar and they have the same clips to attach to the car. With such a smaller vent opening, you would think that it would make a big difference in airflow. And in fact, it actually does. I would say the lack of ability of not being able to change directions of the vents and the smaller opening, I think does cut down on the flow of air. Here I'm sitting in the back and I do feel the airflow, it does come at bit higher up and fades as you go down the seat. I also had a rear seat passenger give me some feedback. Feel it on my hand. You feel a little? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um like but just where you normally have your hands, I'm guessing right like that. Yeah. And I'll just keep on cre increasing it until you feel it, so Alright, here we go. This is one. Yeah. 
So around eight. Yeah. You can feel it right around. Feel around, see where you feel it like the best. Does it feel like right higher? Here. Yeah. Like so it's area. it's shooting straight back more. Yeah. Than at an, than at an angle, right? Right. Okay. All right, thank you. In part two, I will cover the software and how to use this rear seat display. If you're interested, the link is in the video description. Use code RANGER for a 15% discount off your purchase. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in part two soon.